All right, we're going to be talking about four things to stop doing in 2021 in your business so you grow, make more money, and have a ton of fun this year. How you doing? All right, we're going to be talking about, again, business growth right now. Four things to stop doing in 2021. I get to coach business owners all over the world. And guess what? So many of them are making these silly mistakes. Silly, silly mistakes. So we're going to be talking about Four things to stop doing in 2021. Let me know if you can see me and hear me. Where are you from? Type it in right now. What do you think one of the biggest mistakes is in business growth? What is it? What do you think the number one business mistake is right now? Hey there, F-Man. How are you? Nice to see you from Dubai. I will be in Dubai area around November 15th to the 25th, somewhere in that time frame. All right, so what do you think the number one mistake is that business owners are making right now? Right now, right now. Where are you from? New York, hello. All right, just wanna make sure that everybody can see me. Hello there, Navina and Joanne from Poland. Do you have a business? Today I'm talking about business growth. I am gonna be doing a business growth challenge uh, in about a week or so. Um, anybody wanna join my business growth challenge? I'm gonna teach people how to grow their business. If you're an entrepreneur, you are gonna be blown away by what I'm gonna be sharing on business growth. Hello there from the Philippines. Hello, Editha. Awesome, so um, how many of you have a business? Do you have a business? Do you uh, wanna have a business? Mr. Mark Lack, everybody follow Mark Lack on Instagram and anywhere else that he is. He's a rock star. Rock stars, right, Mark? Hey, buddy. Um, all right, so four things to stop doing in business in 2021. So here's number one, all right? Let me know if you have a business, and hi there, Monica, I'll say hello. Give me a like or a love on Instagram. I'm streaming on several different platforms right now, right? So number one, I've got, I've got my list that I wrote out, okay? I'm not gonna show it to you right now, but I'm gonna my list. Number one, I want you to think about the marketplace right now. If you have a business or you want a business, I want you to think about how many emails do you get a day from companies? How many commercials do you see on TV? How many radio ads do you listen to if you're listening to radio? Uh, how many um, uh, clubhouse rooms are you going into? How many messages are you getting a day? And the answer for most of us is dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens, which means what? That chances are your message about your product, your service, your, pro your offering, your knowledge, your skills that you want to help people buy, all right, is doing what? It's getting drowned out in the noise. It's getting drowned out. So how do you stand out from the competition. I want you to think about this, and this is based on Seth Godin's book called Purple Cow. I want you to imagine you're walking, okay, in the country area, and off in the distance you see a herd of cows. And big deal, there's just cows. But what would you do if one cow was purple? What would you do if one cow was purple? You'd go, Holy shit, look at the purple cow. Well, let me ask you a question. When people look at your product or your service, your offering, whether it's on your website, your landing pages, radio, television, billboards, uh, when you speak, do they go, holy mackerel, that's unique, that's different, that I have to pay attention to, right? Do they say that? Right, and so Miriam is saying I would pay attention to that cow, right? Why, because it's different, it's, it's unique. So biggest mistake that people make in 2021 that I want you to stop is I want you to think, okay? My product or service, okay, whether it's your glasses, some awesome smelling lemongrass, this is so good, yummy, yummy, I love lemongrass, right? Um, whether it's your you know, your recorder, like how do you make your product or service stand out from the competition 
so that people will pay attention to you in this busy landscape. Now, your job is to figure it out, okay? And like I mentioned before, I'm gonna be doing a uh, business breakthrough challenge starting next week. Uh, many of you are seeing ads for it all over the place. It is a minimal investment for a whole lot of five days of killer training. So we'll give you the information to that after. So I'll give you a lot of bombs right now. But right now, the first thing I want you to do is take a little bit of time about how am I going to make what is it that I do unique and different so that people look at me instead of the competition first. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, give me a like or a love. Now, there's a process to do that, of course, but if you just start to think about, you know, what can I do to stand out like a purple cow? That'll put you ahead of 90% of business owners right now because they don't figure that out. They don't understand that in order to clear through the clutter of all the noise, you have to stand out first. So if you don't know how to do that, let's start with that, okay? Thank you, D. Len. All right, does that make sense? Give me some likes or loves on Instagram, baby. I'm, uh, I'm in a lot of energy today. I just finished a great workout and um, tomorrow I go skiing. So I'm getting really good shape before I go skiing. So there's a little more information that you probably wanna know, uh, but that's number one, all right? So number two is this. How many of you, uh, I've got people on Instagram right there. I have people on this screen on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and on several different channels. So I'm streaming live right now onto a variety of different channels where I'm sharing some of my knowledge and building several companies. Uh, many of you have already read my best-selling book, The Answer on Growing a Business or Having It All and Achieving Goals, or my, hold on, my newest best-selling book, Inner Size on Mastering Your Mindset and Your Brain. But what you may not know is I built Remax of Indiana to 85 offices, 1,200 salespeople, and four and a half billion a year in sales. Then I got involved with Bamboo.com and iPix. We raised $28 million and took that public on NASDAQ. Then I built One Coach. I built Life Success Institute. Now I'm building MyNeuroGym.com. I'm in the game every day, generating leads, qualifying them, and helping people buy our programs and products. So I am working in my business as well. So a big, big mistake on is they are trying to master a lot of channels like I do right now when they should be mastering one channel first. So should you master Facebook and creating a little tribe and communities? Should you master advertising on Facebook? Should you master YouTube because you enjoy videos like I do and creating videos is easy for you and you can talk about your product, your service, your knowledge, your skills that people want to understand because the people who watch YouTube is a very different profile than the person who watches or is on Facebook and in many cases, the people that are on Facebook aren't paying attention to Instagram, right? So you have to master one thing first based on your knowledge, your skills, and your abilities, and your budget, right? So when I go live and do a session here, you know, I have a team that's behind me. I've got people that can manage the controls. Like if I had to manage all the controls and go live on all these cha uh, cha uh, channels, that would be difficult for me. But speaking and then getting onto all the channels, that's easy. So which is the channel that you are gonna get really good at? Because there's millions of people, prospects, who could want your product or service. And if you're trying to be everything to everyone on all the challenge, channels, chances are you're gonna diffuse your energy instead of focus your energy. So let me give you an example. Sunlight. Right? So if you are outside and it's sunny, you can get a nice little tan, right? But if you take a magnifying glass, hold on, look. Where's my magnifying glass? Oh, I have one here somewhere. If you take a magnifying glass, you can take the sunlight and you can take a piece of paper 
right? And you can magnify that same energy and burn a hole in the paper. You can take that same sunlight and reduce it to single photons and you can cut through a laser. So instead of doing a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit there and a little bit there, why not master one domain? TikTok, great if you love videos. Clubhouse, great if you love audio. YouTube, great if you like to create um, how-to videos. Facebook, great if you want to connect with people. Twitter, great if you want you know, to reach a lot of people just in, in quick little sound bites and then you know, create these connections. So why not choose, okay, one channel first and get really good at that instead of diffusion of energy. Does that make sense? If you like that, give me a like or a love. When I work with small business owners and bigger business owners and I take a look at what they are doing there's very few people that master one domain, let alone three or four or five. All right, so if you like it, give me some, John, this makes sense. Hi there, Gia. Hi there, Jeanette. Nice to see you. Um, you can become an expert at Instagram and create a following on Instagram. All right, that's mistake number two. So specialize on one versus generalize on many. Once you get really good on one, then you can add and choose that one based on your natural skills or your ability to have people on your team that can do those things, all right? So that's number one and number two. We good so far? Hold on a second, I, took, I got my notes. So, so purple cow, stand out, figure out how to stand out, number two. Choose one domain. Here is number three. This one is, uh, this one's such a big mistake. It's not just small business owners that make it. Uh, a lot of business owners make this. And that is um, not having a sales process. Not having a sales process. What does that mean? So let me share with you just a sales process. So you need to think in systems, right? If this and this and this and this happens, then X is predictable. So let's say you are going to um, do a Instagram Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, LinkedIn Live event. You have to think past the event. You have to think past the event. Then what? Like if somebody comes to your event, if somebody reads your blog, if somebody um, reads your Twitter feed, if somebody watches your TikTok, like then what? Like what is the process by which you share your product, service, or knowledge information, tidbits around the things that you want to share? Then what? Like what do you want them to do next? Now, before you ask people to do something, like give you their email, oh, I want your email. Before you ask them to, you know, uh, sign up for this free event or this paid event, you have to give them value, right? Give them value. Give them something tangible and don't be afraid to give, 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 give. When I wrote my book, Inner Size, all my books, Everything that I write in my books is the stuff in my head that I'm working with clients who pay me $5,000 an hour. They just want to go deeper on the work for me to help them implement it. But I want to give, 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 give value, 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 value. And then I can say, hey, if you want to go deeper, get my books. You want to go deeper. Um, get my programs, you wanna go deeper, get into my coaching program, you wanna go deeper, hire me as a consultant, but first, give the knowledge. So here's the question that you wanna ask yourself. What problem does your product or service solve? What fear does it eliminate? What uh, pain does it eliminate? Uh, what gain do people have because of the product? Whenever I am looking to give people content, I'm always looking at understanding what are the pains, fears, frustrations, irritations, wants, needs, and aspirations. 
Let me repeat. What are the pains, fears, frustrations, irritations, wants, needs, and aspirations of the person who wants to buy whatever it is you know that I have to offer? It doesn't make a difference. Somebody sold all this stuff. By the way, here's my gratitude coin, right? Gratitude. So, so you know, whether it's glasses, spray, a pen, a magnifying glass, uh, a gratitude coin, uh, the camera that I'm looking into, the computer, the stand, somebody had to sell that. And every single product or service either eliminates a pain, fear, frustration, irritation, or helps people with a want, need, or aspiration, right? So how do you give somebody content and information and value in advance, and I'll sit on my board or on my keyboard, and I will ask, what is it that people want and need that I could help them with? And then I create, whether it's blogs, articles, videos, process maps, and I give them away. I give them away. And so I do a lot of thinking ahead of time so that I could be of value first. Right, so I can be of value first. So if I can be of value first and I can stand out, um, and I choose one channel to deliver that value in based on you know, what's easy for me, now I can start to build a tribe that wants to follow my work, maybe buy some of my stuff and re recommend it to friends. So that's the thing that you have to look at. So if you're going to have a business, you have to be in business to help people, right? Your business is to help people. Sure, you make money, I get that. A lot of people think I've gotta be in business to make money. No, All right, you're in business to help people and in really, really, really helping people, you can make money because people want to exchange money with what they need. And let me prove this to you. Do you love to buy things? Products, services, do you love to buy things? Yes, right? Well, why? Where's my brain, Andrea, please? Um, why? Well, there's a dopamine center in your brain, a reward center in your brain that when you buy, um, you actually are releasing dopamine, right? And when you share what you buy, Okay, with your friends, you're releasing oxyto oxytocin, uh, the love um, neurotransmitters. Uh, and so here's a question. Do you love to be sold? Do you love to be sold? And the answer is, I hate being sold, right? But I love to buy, right? So how many of you have like moved away from people that are selling? So here's the thing that I want you to ask yourself. When you are offering your product or service to somebody, if they feel like they're being sold something, here's what they do, they move away. But if they feel like you are helping them, they move towards you. So here's what I want you to do, and this is mistake number four, and you know what, since we have time, I'm gonna give you five. I'm gonna give you a bonus one today, and I'm also gonna invite every one of you if you want to learn with me over five days, um, a business breakthrough challenge, and you want to have me mentor you over five days, starting on the 18th of February, uh, my team will put up a link on Instagram. My team will put up a link on all the other challenge. I'm going to share with you processes for how I've built five multi-million dollar companies, and, and it's 47 bucks to join me for five days. And I don't do it for free because if you don't pay, you don't pay attention, but I am willing to do it for $47 for people who are serious. So there's what I'm gonna share with you. So here is the thing that I want you to understand about selling. Selling is doing something to or for somebody, not to somebody. So is your sales process helping people move towards buying your program, product, or service? Or is it causing to move away from buying your program, product, or service? You have to create marketing, content, and offers, irresistible offers, that people want to move towards because it really helps them. It really helps them, okay? And so when you are asking somebody to buy something first, 
Did you offer value in advance to build trust and rapport? Second, did you create a process for them to be able to easily move through from knowledge and information to making a decision that's good and helpful to them? And then, did you create an offer that is irresistible for them? An offer that's irresistible for them that of course you make a profit on. You have to make a profit because you're in business to make a profit and to help people. So what I want you to do is when you are thinking about how to structure your business, how to structure your offers, how to structure your marketing so you stand out from the competition, now you have an opportunity to really grow your business so that it actually works for you. Unfortunately, most business owners have a job that they work in their business. They don't have a business. They're entrepreneurs, I get it, but they have a job. Your job is to create really great marketing that gives people a lot of what they need to help them Okay, with their pains, fears, frustrations, irritations, wants, needs, and aspirations. Your job is to give value in advance on the channel that your ideal client is at. And then your job is to create a sales process that makes it easy for them to do business with you instead of somebody else. It's easy but it's also easy not to do, right? So I wanna just walk you through your own thinking. And I can go on and on and on and on about all of this, but I want you to think about, are you doing that if you have a business? I don't care if you're a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer. I don't care if you sell pens or spray. It doesn't make a difference if it's online or offline, okay? What you have to understand is there is a neuro marketing and neuro sales, meaning there's a way that our brains work that when you understand how to activate different parts of somebody's brain, specifically the limbic area and the um, brain stem area, the first part of the brain that was developed, the instinctual part of the brain, when you understand how to create content, marketing, and offers to talk to somebody's brain in the right path and order, it makes it so much easier versus harder, right? Does that make sense? I've got one other one. Remember I shared with you, I'm gonna give you five. Uh, if you just joined, we're talking about four things to stop doing in your business in 2021. And um, if you missed it, you're gonna to have to watch the replay. And then here is one for right now. Stop buying into the fear that's happening in the marketplace right now. Um, coronavirus, fear, high alert, fear. What if I get it? What if I go? If I get fired, are people buying? Are people not buying? Fear, fear, fear. What if negative? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. What if I get laid off? What if I succeed and then fail? What if it doesn't work? What if I disappoint myself? Stop buying into the fear. I want you to imagine this. Almost 8 billion humans, okay? 8 billion humans on earth. Not everybody is into the fear. Not everybody can't afford stuff. Not everybody um, is in jeopardy whether it's their business or financially. Now, I understand a lot of people are hurting, so I don't wanna take away from that, okay? Yes, there are a lot of people hurting. Some of those people that are hurting have money, some don't, some are scared, some are not. So what I want you to understand is whatever your own mindset is about what's happening out there is what you are creating in here. There are plenty of people who want what you have, your product, your service, your knowledge, your skill, whatever it is that you can offer them. Maybe this group doesn't want it right now. Maybe this group can't afford it right now. But if you're focusing on this group and this group, you're missing this group that needs it and wants it right now more than any other time. 
So your job, and this goes back to my point number one, is you have to stand out in all of your marketing because if you don't, the group that's actually looking for you can't see you in the noise, right? If you don't stand out, that they can't see you because you look like every other cow. And if you just joined me, um, you're probably wondering, did he just say you look like every other cow? I was teaching about standing out um, from the competition as if you saw a purple cow in an audience. So I'm always careful. I don't want to call anybody a cow, okay. um, but the marketing term, right? And so what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on why you can't? Are you focusing on it's not the right time? Are you focusing on I don't have the time, the money, the, money, the energy, uh, the knowledge, the skill? People aren't buying right now. Uh, things are so bad. What if this happens? What if that happens? Oh my God, what if that happens? If you're in a state of fear, then your Einstein brain's turned off and your Frankenstein brain's turned on. And in a state of fear, you deactivate motivation, you deactivate behavior that is required to take action right now. So what you want to do is you have to master your mindset, right? You have to stop buying into the fear mongering on television and radio and so many other places. You have to focus on how you can achieve your financial goals and your business goals because you must and because you will and because you deserve it, okay? So I've given you way more than four things to stop doing in business in 2021. If you've enjoyed this, um, share it. Give me a little like or love. Uh, let me know what's the one thing you took away right now. Type in right now. Give me one thing you took away and I will see if I can, uh, I can read them. We'll put them up on the screen, Andrea. Let's see if we can put one lesson you just took away. All right. And let me know if you enjoyed this. So uh, Emiko, Fear Mastering how to quit the fear. Fear is an emotion. Uh, Jesse and I think, stop buying into the fear. Uh, how you can versus why you can't. Way to go, Cheryl. Come on, fudge the fear. Yeah, stand out from the competition. Stand out. Come on, master your mindset. Raul Lopez Jr., you got it. Right, stand out. Come on, give me the fear. Bye-bye, fear alley. Yeah, there's billions of people who want what you have. Don't be afraid. Come on, faith over fear. Yeah, faith over fear. Faith is the absence of fact, right? Be where your clients are, so you pick the channel. F man, lots of hearts to you too. Add value in advance, you got it. Tanya, be the purple cow, you got it. How can you be the purple cow? Value first, fear is your friend, it can be your fuel for success. Serve the group that needs you. Yeah, what are their pains, fears, frustrations, irritations, wants, needs, and aspirations? You fill that out, you will touch the hearts of your client. People want to buy when they think they're being helped, and they turn away when they're trying, when you're trying to sell them something. We all want to buy. Nobody wants to be sold, right? Uh, good. So we have uh, SEM, self mastery. There are billions of businesses that are thriving. Yes. Listen, I get it that it's, you know, unique time in our history. Okay, that's the reality. I adapt, right? You want another thing to start doing in 2021? Every one of my clients last year at this time, do you know what is the number one thing I started working with all of my business clients? There's one thing we started working on one year ago. Jerry, stand up, stand out, you got it. Stop watching the news, Herbal Heather, right? Can anybody guess what's the one thing that we started, that I started working on with all of my private clients who pay me $50,000 to $250,000 in a year to work with them? One thing I worked with every one of them. Anybody wanna know what that is? Growthlessness, no, this is Sony from India, hi there. One thing was being an adaptationist. Being an adaptationist. So I want you to be a mental adaptationist. I want you to be an emotional adaptationist. I want you to be a business adaptationist. Because when you become a business adaptationist and a mindset and emotional adaptationist where you adapt and adopt to the circumstances, you control the environment instead of allowing the environment to control you. 
Mindset is what separates the best from the rest, right? Yes or yes, mindset is what separates the best from the rest, right? All right, uh, if you want to um, study with me for five days, it'll be about a couple hours a day, starting on the 18th of February, Business Breakthrough Challenge, uh, 47 bucks free. Click on the link that we'll put on for you. Uh, take a look at everything we're gonna go through. It will blow your mind and level up your skills as a CEO. It'll level up your knowledge. It'll level up what you believe you can do. And I will show you how to generate tons of leads, how to separate yourself from the competition, and how to be able to grow your business so you double or triple your income in the next year. That's possible, but it's not possible with an old mindset. It's not possible with allowing fear to hold you back and it's not possible with shitty marketing. So you need to have really good marketing. If you wanna learn uh, on Instagram, take a look at my bio and uh, over here on all the other channels, we'll put some links in the um, feeds below. If you enjoyed this, share it away like you always do. I appreciate you and I'm here every Tuesday live. And then on the 18th, we're gonna start this business breakthrough challenge. If you're ready to have a business breakthrough, so this year is the best business year of your life, I invite you to join me. All right, thanks so much. Have an awesome day. Boom, 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 boom. Bye now. And thank you for sharing this. Bye.